There was a man named Jonah called to preach the word But he ran the other way Ignoring what he heard He boarded a ship to Tarshish To flee from God's command But the storm came crashing down With the power of his hand You can run from the calling You can hide from the light But the Lord will find you In the darkness of the night In the belly of the great fish Or the depths of the sea His love will pursue you Until you're finally free Three days in the darkness, Jonah cried in despair But God heard his prayer in the deep of the lair The fish spit him out on the shore of dry land And Jonah went to Nineveh with the message in his hand You can run from the calling, you can hide from the light But the Lord will find you in the darkness of the night In the belly of the great fish or the depths of the sea His love will pursue you until you're finally free You can run from the calling, you can hide from the light but the Lord will find you in the darkness of the night In the belly of the great fish or the depths of the sea His love will pursue you until you're finally free You can run from the calling, you can hide from the light But the Lord will find you in the darkness of the night In the belly of the great fish or the depths of the sea His love will pursue you until you're finally free Jonah cried in despair But God heard his prayer in the deep of the lair The fish spit him out on the shore of dry land And Jonah went to Nineveh with the message in his hand You can run from the calling, you can hide from the light But the Lord will... Hey everyone, welcome back. You know, sometimes we get questions from listeners that really make us think. Yeah. And uh, this one, this is one of those times yeah. where diving into something that's seriously got people talking and it's a tough one. It's a big one, yeah. It's this whole thing about hypocrisy, especially when it comes to faith, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, how do we square it when someone says they believe one thing, right? but then their actions tell a totally different story? Yeah, and you know, the listener sent in some sources that get right at this question a lot of us have probably wondered about. At some point, can you ever really look at someone's actions and question if they were ever really a believer in the first place? Like, were they ever for real? Right, exactly. It's a question that gets deep, for sure. Yeah. It really gets at the heart of authenticity, doesn't it? It does. And it's especially jarring when it's someone we put on a pedestal, like a religious leader, right? No, oh, absolutely. You know, when it's someone in a position of authority like that, and then boom, there's a scandal. It really throws people for a loop, makes them question everything. For sure. And that's exactly what's going on with this Steve Lawson situation mm -hmm. that was in the deep dive request. Oh, right, right. Like, if what's being said is true... It's a pretty big deal. Yeah. It's like this double life situation. Yeah. You know, saying all the right things, looking the part, but then allegedly engaging in some seriously shady stuff behind the scenes. Yeah, it's a tough one. And it makes you wonder, like you were saying, was any of it real? Was it all just for show? Right. Was he ever really walking the walk or was it all talk? Yeah. And that's what makes these sources the listeners sent so fascinating because they tackle this idea head on. Okay. They really dig into that tension between saying you're a Christian yeah. and actually living it out. Yeah, and that's a theme that runs throughout the Bible too, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that line from Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, that's powerful stuff. What's that one again? It's where Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. It's like this stark warning. It really is a reality check, isn't it? I, like, it's yeah. not enough to just talk the talk. Exactly. So how do we figure that out then? Is it saying only perfect people get into heaven? Because that doesn't sound like grace. Right. And that's where this whole idea of fruits comes in. You Literally. Know? Yeah, it's this idea that if your faith is real, it'll show in your actions and how you live your life. Okay, so not just words, but actions too. Exactly. So it's not about being perfect. But are you at least trying to live out what you say you believe? Right. It's about that consistency, that genuine effort to align your life with your beliefs. I like that. Align your life. Yeah. So it's not about being flawless, but more about the direction you're heading. Exactly. And, you know, you brought up a great verse from Titus earlier that really gets at this. Which one was that? Chapter 1, verse 16. It talks about people who claim to know God, but by their actions they deny him. 
It's like their actions are speaking louder than their words. It's like a contradiction almost. Exactly. And that's where things get really interesting because as much as we might want a clear-cut answer, yeah. the sources you sent, they don't actually come right out and say whether someone can be a true believer and still be hiding serious sin. Yeah. So we're left wrestling with that tension. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's like we can see someone's actions, but we can't see their heart. Right. You can't always know what's going on inside, what their intentions are, or if they're wrestling with guilt or regret. Exactly. We're getting into some really deep stuff here. It's true. This idea of judging someone's heart, it's a tricky business. It is. And it's something we need to be really careful about. Absolutely. Uh -huh. We have to approach these conversations with a lot of grace and humility, recognizing that we can't see into someone else's soul. I think that's a good place to pause for now, actually. Yeah. Lots to think about, for sure. It really makes you think about that balance, doesn't it? Yeah. Between grace, you know, believing in a God who forgives and offers second chances yeah and accountability like what happens when someone's actions just seem to fly in the face of everything their fake is supposed to be about you've hit the nail on the head there that tension between those two things is really at the heart of this whole discussion isn't it and it's interesting because the sources you sent they don't shy away from that at all right they bring up this idea that someone might have to be fooling themselves about their own faith you know or maybe they were once walking a path of faith but they've strayed from it over time what some people call backsliding and those are really tough possibilities to think about but they're part of what makes us human it's like that one source that asked how a true believer filled with the holy spirit could hide their sin for so long without any guilt you know it's a question a lot of us are probably asking right now i'm sure i know i am and I don't know if there's an easy answer to that, but it does make you think about this idea of free will and how we have this incredible capacity for both good and bad. And sometimes we make choices that contradict what we say we believe, you know? It's like we quiet that inner voice, that conscience, and we convince ourselves that we're in the right, even when maybe deep down we know we're not. Yeah, it's a bit of a scary thought when you really sit with it. It really is. And it makes me wonder, do you think that's part of why this whole topic is so fascinating to people? What do you mean? This idea of hypocrisy. I mean, it's easy to get caught up in judging someone else, right? But what about when we turn that lens inward? What about our own struggles with consistency, those times when our actions don't line up with our beliefs? Oh, absolutely. I think you've hit on something really important there. This isn't just some abstract theological debate. It's deeply personal. And when we hear stories like the Steve Lawson situation, it's natural to ask ourselves, could I be deceiving myself? Am I truly living out my faith? Or am I just going through the motions? These sources, even if they don't give us all the answers, they create a space for that kind of self-reflection. And I think that's so valuable. Yeah, it's like that thing about taking the log out of your own eye before you worry about the speck in someone else's. Exactly. It's easier said than done, though. I'm right? so sure. So, mm. I mean, are we supposed to just ignore potential hypocrisy to avoid being judgmental? That's the other side of the coin, isn't it? We don't want to become overly suspicious of everyone around us constantly questioning their motives. Right. But we also can't just turn a blind eye to harmful actions in the name of grace. It's about finding that balance. Exactly. Finding that sweet spot where we can hold people accountable while still leaving room for genuine repentance, for transformation. Which, again, easier said than done. Oh, absolutely. It takes a lot of wisdom, a lot of humility. Yeah. But you know what I find helpful? Shifting the focus a little bit. Oh, I see. Instead of getting so caught up in whether or not someone else is a true Christian, what if we spent more time examining our own hearts? So looking inward instead of outward. Exactly. Are we more concerned with appearing good or actually being good? Are we willing to face our own shortcomings and let God do a work in us? Those are the questions that lead to real growth, to authenticity, don't you think? I like that, focusing on our own journey. Yeah, because that's something we actually have control over. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else is doing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's about our own relationship with faith. Exactly. And, you know, one of the sources you shared talked about how hypocrisy can sometimes be a form of self-deception. Oh, interesting. Where we convince ourselves that our actions are justified even when they contradict our values. Oh, I could see that. And that really struck me because it's something I think we're all susceptible to at some point. Oh, yeah. Regardless of our beliefs, we all have those blind spots, right? Totally. 
we all have those areas where we might bend the rules a bit to fit our own narrative. Exactly. And what's so fascinating about this whole hypocrisy thing is that it often comes from this desire to protect our own egos, you know? It's like we'd rather cling to this maybe distorted view of ourselves than face the discomfort of admitting we were wrong or that we messed up or that we haven't quite lived up to our own standards. Exactly. And you know, the sources you sent, they really don't let us off the hook easily with this stuff. They challenge us to be really honest with ourselves about that gap between our beliefs and our actions. It's that walk the walk thing we were talking about earlier. Precisely. It's not enough to just talk the talk. So I guess the question is, how do we do that? How do we bridge that gap? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It really is a lifelong journey, isn't it? It is. And it brings us back to Steve Lawson, you know, we might never know for sure what was going on in his heart. Right. Or if real faith was ever really there. And you know, it's interesting. One of the sources brought up a verse that I think speaks to this. Oh, yeah. Which one? It's from 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. It says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, that it might become plain that they all are not of us. Oof. That's a tough one. It is, isn't it? It it suggests that there might be a point where someone's actions reveal something deeper about their heart. Like maybe their faith wasn't as real as they portrayed it to be. Right, exactly. But it's still not a verse that gives us a license to go around judging and labeling people, you know. Okay, so where does that leave us? Hmm. If we can't always know what's in someone's heart and we're not supposed to play judge and jury, how do we process these situations? You know, when someone we thought we knew seems to be living a double life. It's tough, and I don't think there are easy answers, but maybe it's about holding those questions with a bit of humility and grace. Letting these situations spark some introspection, some self-reflection, rather than letting them fuel that judgmental part of ourselves. You know what I mean? That's a really good point. Right. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else is doing well, or not doing. Right. But maybe the real work is focusing on our own journey. Exactly. Trying to live authentically, trying to close that gap between what we say we believe and how we actually live. And offering grace yeah. to ourselves and others when we mess up along the way. Exactly. Remembering that none of us are perfect. We're all works in progress. And that ultimately God's the one who sees our hearts. Absolutely. And his grace is bigger than all of this. Well, that was quite the deep dive. This conversation has definitely given me a lot to think about. Me too. These are questions that we all wrestle with at some point, I think. And to our listener, thank you so much for sending in your deep dive request. Yeah, thanks for trusting us to explore this with you. We hope this conversation, even without easy answers, has given you something to chew on. Maybe even spark some good conversations with friends or family. And encouraged you to keep pursuing authenticity in your own life, whatever that looks like for you. Well said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. See you next time. Until then.